Um, okay, good afternoon. We're just starting. Um, we're a little bit early, so I'm going to give everybody uh, a couple of minutes Okay, we're just waiting for a few more people to join us. Um, so, get started. Okay, I think we're still waiting for a few people, but I think we'll start. I think there's one more person that's left to join us, but um, mind of everybody's time, so we'll make it start um, and, and they can join us as they go. Okay, so welcome back. Thanks again for this morning. Um, this afternoon's session, as we discussed this morning, it's, about, it's very much about looking at the system, the yeah, acro system, um, which is the key system that we're using through VTA. Um, I'm joined by Libby Timms, who used to be in our team, be part of the associate management team, but moved on to the And now she's the super user for anything <laughs> pro. So Libby's joined us and she's going to be talking through this afternoon. Um, and we'll be working together to explain the system and um, to match it to what we discussed this morning, which was fundamental processes that you'll be going through. Um, so we'll be working together. Afternoon. Again, we'll we take a break midway through. Uh, it's quite important, um, and we should be finished hopefully in a couple of hours. Um, so we'll be finishing a little bit of the schedule. We think, unless there are lots of really good questions, and um, it might extend a little bit. 
Right, okay, so this morning we talked about the processes, we talked about the different systems, um, and this afternoon we'll be looking at the systems itself. So what we've got in the slide deck is we've got a series of slides with screenshots, and the screenshots will explain steps that we go through to achieve the different activities. Um, and that's in the deck, and you will be receiving the deck after the training, after we've got some of the feedback from this morning. Um, just before we continue, can I just check? Can everybody hear me okay? Um, Alison, I know you're online. Can you let me know if the sound is okay? We've changed rooms and you're never really sure. Alison, are okay? Or Alison, uh, Alison Atkinson, Alison, can we hear me okay? Not that clear. Okay, I had a feeling that was going to be the case because we had the problem. Um, can you do me a favour? Can you pass me that silver box? That's <laughs> like <laughs> Okay. Right, hang on. Let's try this. Is that any better? <laughs> right, okay. Um, brilliant. I had a feeling that that would be a problem. That's great. Thank you, everybody who's responded. Um, that is absolutely great. So, the problem was that the box was too far away from me. Right, we've sorted that out and we can carry on. So, give me a minute. Put you back on mute, Samson. And off. As I said, um, the, this, you'll get the deck. Um, the deck has got a lot of information. It's got, also got a lot of screenshots, sh shits, screenshots taken <laughs> from the system. At least I didn't swear. Um, screenshots taken from the system. I hope you're all laughing individually in your own um, houses. Um, taken from the system and put on the deck. And that's really to give you um, uh, uh, the opportunity to, to you know, check back at the deck after the webinar and you can um if there's anything you don't understand that will give you a walkthrough of what you have to do in addition to this training now what we'll also be doing is um libby is kindly going to be working with us to record a series of bite-sized videos so for each of the different activities that you'll have to do for example logging on or setting up a planning meeting we'll do a bite-sized video that will be available to you um, eventually on the web on the epo pro site and that will walk you through how to do the different activities and we'll do it bite-sized so you can just select the one you need and can just watch that so that's what you'll be getting but um what we'll do in this afternoon session is that we'll, libby will talk you through the activity um, live and then we'll run through some slides it's going to be a bit of a double act right okay so first point is logging on now Libby's already logged onto the system so just to, to get you um, just to inform you I think on the 26th of September all of the IEPAs and LEPAs who have been identified as supporting and um, to help through uh, the beta will receive a link from EPA Pro giving them access to the EPA Pro system and they will be get their get prompt that's the email. They get a prompt to change their password. Reset password. Um, they have to put their username in, which is given to them, and then they have to reset that password. And we would advise you to do that as soon as you receive the link. It's the same way as it works in Wall Garden um, and is pretty self-explanatory. So as soon as you get that link, can you go in, reset your password, and um, obviously remember your password, and then you can sign in to your account. Okay, so... And what I'd like to do now, I'd like to get Libby to talk you through, um, once you log on, what the landing page will look like for you. Libby's a super user, so she will go into, will go into what it will look like from an IEPA perspective. But Libby, do you want to just talk, give them a quick talk through that initial landing page? Okay, good afternoon everyone. Okay, so what you see in front of you <coughs> is the main dashboard for an IEPA. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that the functionalities between an IEPA and an EPA are very similar. Um, they, they mirror each other so there won't be any confusion. So the, sorry, the main dashboard looks like so. So to the top right hand side, um, excuse the naming, uh, IEPA is called Frank Farmer. And if you click on that, you can edit your profile, additional details and also log out. Up here, you will see next to your name a little icon. I'll just click on that again just so you can see it. A little icon with a red dot. 
and this lists down all your notifications that you have had from the EPA booking team in Burntwood. Here is a search engine that you can search for an apprentice if needed. And to your left, you'll have some subcategories. One states caseload. So here you will find a wait and acceptance. And these are for apprentices that have been allocated to you, but you have not accepted or rejected the workload. The one underneath states my caseload, and that will give you your workflow, the apprentices that you have accepted for assessing. We'll go through these in more detail afterwards. It's just to give you an overview. The gateway review, as you can see, it's got enrolled, completed and archived. Quite self-explanatory. Enrolled is those apprentices who have enrolled through gateway. Completed are those apprentices that have completed their gateway and archived of their apprentices that have been archived. Can I just add at that point, um, from the discussions this morning, um, assuming that the allocations that you receive, everybody will have completed gateway, what you will predominantly see is that they'll be in the completed section there. Um, but as we said, there may be a risk that some are allocated and there are still some issues with the gateway and that's why you see the enrolled section there. So, you can so see the ones that haven't quite made it. They haven't, ones who haven't quite made it, but depending on how this works, we do envisage that the, there's a small risk of being allocated things that so you may start the happy part that they may be. There or, might be the odd occur. So that's why it's important to underline that, yeah. but the, um, I would expect to see the vast majority there completed rather than um, an archive means they have finished everything. They've finished everything. Yeah. Okay, under the assessment tab, this is ultimately your main workflow. So here you'll be able to book planning meetings, <coughs> excuse me, manage your planning meetings, your assessment progress and certification. Again, we'll go through these in more detail later on today. And then the last one is your support materials. And there you will find a lot of supporting materials that can help you um, throughout the EPA. Um, I think in terms of the support materials that are currently there, there isn't anything currently there at the moment, but we are preparing materials. Um, we may provide them to you separately from the platform initially, and then they will go up onto the platform afterwards. Yes. Okay, so I, I can't guarantee they'll all be there for beta, but you will be provided with them in one format or another. And then just to give you an overview, again, as this is dummy data, this is a dummy IEPA, and this is a lot of dummy data that we're using as this is a test site. So you'll see like a calendar here, you can flick through to the months to find out your workload and what you've got coming up. And here you can see your apprentices that are awaiting acceptance, apprentices that are currently at Gateway, and then a nice little widget that shows you apprentices by standard. And that is if, you're, if you are working across different standards, if it's business admin and customer service, etc. Any questions? Do you have one? So the question is, if IEPAs assess different standards, do they have one login for everything? Yes, they will have one login for everything. And if you are a LEPA as well as an IEPA, it will be one login and it will give you access to the quality assurance that you have to do and also for any assessment that you have to do. And um, if you are a LEPA, obviously you can't, <coughs> you can't quality assure your own work. Any more questions at this point? No? Okay. So, um, <coughs> so as we've said, login in screens, and then um, Libby's kindly done some screenshots which and explains the different sections where you find the notification and an overview of that landing page um, as an IEPA, um, and then uh, other information about that. Um, as Libby said, the key tab for you is that assessment tab there which is where you go through the different steps that we spoke about this morning and we'll we'll talk about that now so the first um activity that you will be asked to do as we've said this morning um there are you know you you might have a conversation with the epa team or they might understand your availability and you'll be allocated an apprentice or a number of apprentices a number of cases to accept 
or reject. Can you talk us through what that would look like, Libby? Okay, so going back up to your menu where you would go to caseload, <clears throat> you are looking for the awaiting acceptance. If you click onto that, and it will display then the apprentices that the EPA booking team in Burntwood have allocated out to you. As you can see, again, please ignore that the given names and family names, this is just dummy data we're using. So you'll have the apprentice name, the standard that they are um, registered on, the employee, the training provider, and then they expect date. Okay, so, so we'll, what we'll do now, we'll accept an apprentice. So you're happy with everything and all you do to the right hand side, you've got an actions and you've got accept and reject. Um, quite straightforward, you would click accept, you will get a prompt that will say, are oh, you sure you wish to accept <coughs> this apprentice? And you click okay. And they have gone now from your await and acceptance and they have gone now into your caseload tab. Any questions at that point? No? Okay. So for Apprentice 81, again, we are going to reject this apprentice because um, you've won the lottery and you're not going to work anymore. <laughs> and you're going to take me with you. So again, and Jane. So we go to the Actions tab and you've got Accept and Reject and you would click Reject. And at this point, you would have to put a reason for rejection that could be, you've won the lottery. You've won the lottery. So. Definitely not a valid reason for rejecting an input assessment, but anyway. Oh, is it though? Won the lottery. Lottery. I'm sure they'll care, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you'll get a prompt again. Are you sure you want to reject this apprentice? And there you go. And that will then be removed from your waiting acceptance. This will not show in your caseload. Okay, we've got a question. Let's have a little look. Uh, okay, so Kelly, your question. Will the postcode be the EPA address? Yes, it should be. Um, we have got a question to pick up with our EPA team and also our customer facing team to make sure that when the customer fill in their details, they put the relevant information in the right fields. So in theory, I mean, when you look at this, you'd hope that you could see everything you need to see to to give you an understanding of whether you need to accept it or not. So you can see you know, the workload that you've got, you've already got 17 apprentices, you're quite busy. Um, and then if you live in um, Aberdeen, um, in terms of you know where the endpoint assessment is taking place, you may not want to accept that based on that reason. Um, so it should be, but we, we've got some things that we need to pick up with the customer team. So that may not always be the provider, that it, could be the employer. Well, it might be, and I think that's what we've got to confirm, Bill. So um, ideally, what we want in the platform at that point is we've got the information that the IEPA needs to be able to make a mindful acceptance of that allocation. And I just we just need to confirm that that is made clear to the people who are entering the data. So <coughs> I've got that as a query from yesterday, so we'll pick that up separately, if that's all right, Kelly. And we'll clarify that. Okay. Yep. Okay, any more questions on accepting or rejecting a caseload? No. Can I ask a question? Um, so in terms of your caseload, if you wanted to find out, let's have a look at your caseload. Let's have a little look at it. Should we have a look at our caseload? Yeah. Okay. So click on my caseload. So as previously mentioned, this is where all your apprentices will be display and this is all the work that you've accepted um, from allocations from the EPA booking team in lovely Burntwood. Okay, <coughs> I will just go through because what this does, it can give you a progress, uh, a bit of an update on where each apprentice is with their endpoint assessment. So let's find here, uh, Apprentice 7, lovely name, and we're just going to use this little tab here that says profile. Click onto that, and that kind of gives you a progress chart of where that apprentice is with their endpoint assessment. As you can clearly see, they are registered on the level two customer service practitioner, um, and they've not yet reached a gateway. So they have a 0% complete 
I'll see if I can just show you one that's a little bit further on. No, that's pretty much the same as well. So yeah, it'll go through the registration to Gateway, to the planning meeting, the assessment component, and then certification. So once the apprentice has gone through their endpoint assessment and they have passed, this line will go green and this will go to 100%. What's worth pointing out at this point as well, as I say, this is dummy data that we are using. So some of the assessment components might not be relevant to the standard that we're working on today. At the top here, you've got an overview. So that is literally what we're seeing now. If you tick on profile, that will give you basic information about the apprentice um, and their workplace details. Just scroll down. Let's see. Oh, got a question. We got a few. Yeah. Yeah. So can this not show whether this is a remote or face-to-face -face event? That's a really good point, Alex. Um, and what I don't know is whether they will be built on the whether the data will be built on those assumptions. So can we pick that up as a question after the session? My expectation is that if generally for the standard it is a remote event, then that would be the assumption. If generally for the standard it's a face-to-face -face event that would be an assumption. But if there was an exception to that, we may need an exception process. But can we note that as a question to pick up after the training? Okay. Will the EPA team still be allocating the LEAPA and can the IEPA see that on here? Um, just a point of clarity, do the AP, EPA team allocate the LEAPA or is it is there an agreement that the LEAPA will the monitor certain yeah. IEPAs? Yeah, the AM allocates the IEPAs to the LEAPA. Okay, so the same situation for this is that um, the, the LEAPA will continue to monitor the same IEPAs yes. that they do BAUs or current processes. Yeah. That wouldn't change, Kelly. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, so we've gone through the overview. Oh, one more question. Will the EPA booking team be able to see the apprentice overview screen from Steve? Oh, from Steve. <laughs> right, okay. Um, will the EPA booking team be able to see the apprentice um, overview? Alex, can I ask a question? Um, because this training is specifically for the IEPAs, can we log these questions and we can pick that up after the training session? I think that's important. Um, because we need to focus on the IEFA functionality today. All important questions, all really good, but let's make a note of all of them and then we will have a debrief session afterwards to pick them up, if that's all right. Alex, Alex. Alex I am in Burntwood tomorrow, so you can always call me then. Okay, okay, so overview and profile, and then there's a little section here for notes. What's really important on this is that, again, I tested this this morning. Any notes that you put on this tab, will not show on the apprentice dashboard however they will show on the provider dashboard so it's best that not to use this for internal communications if you wanted to drop a note to the lead pad or anything like that no and because of the limitations with the platform currently um, we made it very clear this morning that in terms of feedback in terms of feedback from the LEPA to the IEPA we're doing that off platform beta that may evolve, but it needs to be on platform for beta. That's important to explain. Okay. Okay. So, any questions before we move on? Just one. Uh, this screen they would never see, I guess, because they wouldn't see until they hit gateway. So that everyone that they see will have to be up to gateway, won't it? In theory, in theory they should be, as we said, just in case they might see the old one. So if they then. see the one or two that aren't there, then they will go and hold. Um, not unless they've been contacted by the EPA because oh, it could be a matter of hours or a day and um, because in theory they might not have passed gateway but that is before a planning meeting date is in the diary they so, carry on with a happy path until they're told yeah. not to so, uh, despite that everything that's allocated assume that it's gone through gateway and continue to process in that normal way contact. Um, if there are any exceptions the EPA and event booking team will let you know 
or the gateway team will let them know. I think we need to confirm that, but um, who it will be, but they will inform them. Um, okay, so receiving a case. So I'll just go through some of the slides just to make sure we've picked up the notes. Um, so these are the screens that Libby's shown you, accepting, rejecting a caseload. Um, it's important to remember that if you reject an allocation, you need to be asked to put a, asked to put a reason for that. So we can just understand what that might be. Um, if you accept an allocation, and we spoke about this this morning, and then you later <coughs> reject it, um, you will need to let the EPA booking team know by email and copy it deeper because you'll need to flag that to them because they will need to reallocate that quite quickly to um, another IEPA to make sure that we maintain that customer experience. It's quite important to underline. Okay, so again, moving to the screens, Libby's explained these, um, and then the last screen has a very <coughs> handy sort of progress bar that shows you where you're up to with that particular apprentice. Okay, so can we move on to the planning meeting, Libby? We certainly can. So again, for planning meeting, you would now go into your assessment menu tab here, and you would book a planning meeting. Okay, so after your initial communications with the provider? Yes, yeah, so remember from this morning, the um, IEPA would contact the provider, they would propose a number of dates for the um, planning meeting to take place. The provider would come back and confirm one of those dates, and at that point, the IEPA would then request that a go-to meeting is set up by the EPA events booking team for that planning meeting because it happens remotely. The EPA events team would set that meeting up on GoTo Meeting and you would receive the notification and the link for that uh, planning meeting webinar. Um, and so once you've done that, you would then need to set up a planning meeting on EPA Pro. And that's about putting the date in that you've agreed um, and the, the, con the webinar linked for that planning meeting. Okay, so you go to assessment, book a planning meeting, very self-explanatory again. You click on the date and you'll get a calendar, so you can go along. It will say it's for Thursday. At the bottom here, you've got like a little timer. So you click on that and just set the time for your planning meeting, so it will say 10 o'clock. The expected duration is default, so it will always stay at one. The type of um, meeting, is it going to be remote or face-to-face? -face? You would click remote. And this is where the URL for the go-to meeting. So the link that's provided to you by the event booking team can go in there. Now, if the event booking team haven't managed to set up the go-to meeting link at that point, you can just put a placeholder in there of go to meeting link. It could just be, a, um, and you can amend that later. Yeah. I'll just put that in there. And then at this point, then you want to add your apprentice. Okay, so click on the blue. It's pre populated, so you can start typing in your apprentice name. Uh, here's one I made earlier. Sorry, 24. There you go. So we are going to work with Apprentice 84 and we're going to just add them to the planning meeting. You will then see them appear at the bottom. So then you've got the option that where you can add other attendees to this planning meeting for that apprentice. So by clicking on the add other attendees, this will then display all potential attendees that can attend this planning meeting um, that are related to that apprentice in regards to the employer, the provider, the um, endpoint assessor, which the terminology is endpoint assessor, what it really means and what it should mean is the independent endpoint assessor and the EPA manager, which is the EPA booking teams in Burntwood. So we're going to add the employer, we will add the training provider. And also, as an IEPA, I'm going to make sure that I attend the meeting, so I'm going to add myself. So remember, from the um, from the planning meeting um, um, email that you sent out, um, we discussed this morning, what you'll be asking the customer to do, the provider to do, is to clarify 
who they want to have at that planning meeting. Now we talked about in the vast majority of cases we envisage it will be the provider um, and but they may want the employer to come and this is the point where you add those people. Now just a heads up on the platform as it currently stands you always have to add the apprentice on the planning meeting to make it work. So the, the apprentice will be added even if they don't intend to, plan, to, to come to the planning meeting you will need to add the apprentice in to um, the, the system to allow it to proceed. Uh, remember, as I said, it's the provider who will determine whether they want the attendee, the apprentice, to be to be involved or not. Okay, so once you've selected everybody who will be attending the planning meeting, you select close. And there at the bottom, you will find your apprentice, your employer, your training provider, and yourself, your independent endpoint assessor. You can have an option to add a guest should there be a requirement to do that. So somebody outside the relationship within that apprentice, you would add the first name, last name and the email address. Someone like the leaper or something like that. It could be the leaper if the leaper was doing a quality assurance sure. visit or I think in certain circumstances they're allowed to bring somebody in for support. support. If, well. if yeah. that person is not are already on the system, you could add them at that point. And then all you would do is add and they would then populate at the bottom here. So what we need to do now is just confirm the attendance. So on here, this title confirmed, you're just going to tick so they go green. And that is just to show that they're confirmed to attend the planning meeting. So once all that's in place, you select save. And the top here will prompt you to say the assessment meeting created successfully. Okay. Um, so that's the planning meeting. Um, and just one more point to underline. Remember we said that when you're allocated apprentices this morning, you may be allocated two or three apprentices at a particular provider. Now, um, to be efficient with time, you may have one planning meeting taking place where you discuss all of the assessment dates for those three apprentices. However, when you come to add the dates to EPA Pro, you will need to set up a planning meeting, so carry out the previous activity, for each of those apprentices separately. So each of the apprentices has a planning meeting date against them, because that will allow you to proceed and to put the assessment dates um, into that record. We've got a question. Um, Kelly, so Kelly's question is, do you have to confirm the apprentice if they're not attending? That's a good question. Are they one of the list, the confirmation list? Um, I'm going to have to check on that one. Oh, that's a really it's good a question, good Kelly. So yes. we, um, oh, what a great team. <laughs> so we, that's a very good point, because when we've tested the system previously, we were under the impression that we had to add the, add the apprentice, and they would automatically be sent a notification. Um, regardless of whether they're going to attend that meeting or not and then the provider would manage that with the apprentice but you might have actually pinpointed that a way to avoid that is just not to press the confirm button for that apprentice so leave that with us and we'll confirm for you good question, good question. any more questions okay great so um Let's assume you've booked your planning meeting, Libby. Um, you as the Aper have booked it. You've booked it for the uh, 16th of January. Can we come out and go back to the home page? Yeah. Um, and you suddenly get a notification that, um, I don't know, there's been a lot of people have won the lottery or something has happened. And in the rare, what we hope is the rare occurrence, that the, um, the provider now needs to reschedule that planning meeting. Okay. Can you show us how to do that? Yeah, okay. So you've had confirmation that the planning meeting now needs to change for, for whatever reason. Okay. Now there are two ways that you can go through to this. You could go to manage planning meetings again and find your apprentice, which mine was 84. So here are all will be listed all your your planning meetings, whether they have been scheduled, whether they've been rescheduled, whether they've been cancelled, or whether they've just completed. So across here you've got your apprentice details, the standard, again, employer, provider details, and the status 
of the EPA. So if I'm going to find mine, which is 84 here, and I'm going to go along, I can see it's scheduled, but now I've got the option to create the assessment plan, edit a meeting, or just genuinely view the meeting. Well, I want to edit, so I'm going to click on edit. There's the planning meeting that we have literally just set up. And I need to change the date because they can't make it. So we're going to change it to the 20th. And all you do is go to the calendar and just click on the new date. And if there's a new time, so we'll do 11 o'clock. So the date has now been changed to the rescheduled planning meeting. Okay. It's worth pointing out that the GoToWebinar link will also have to change. Yeah, so remember, you will need to contact the EPA events booking team. If you are changing the date of the planning meeting, they will need to reschedule that go-to meeting. And then here, you've got the reschedule or cancel reasons. This has to be completed. Okay, so we will put it down to the employer could not attend. Just to point out where it says EPA cannot attend, that actually means yourselves as IEPA could not attend. You do have to give a description, a reason why this cannot continue to go forward. So we will just put um, unavailable. Okay, so all we've done is change the date and the time if needed, the go to webinar link and the reschedule reason. We've just put employee could not attend and they're just unavailable. As you come down, you've got the option then to reschedule. That's what we want to do. I'm going to click again. It will prompt you asking, are you wanting to reschedule the meeting? We will confirm it. And at the top up here, assessment meeting has now been rescheduled. Voila. Great. Okay, we've got a question. <coughs> okay, so um, the first question from Tracy. Can the entry be amended retrospectively if, for example, the employer didn't attend they were scheduled to. Um, I don't know the answer to that, Tracy, and I, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure we'd need to amend it retrospectively. But can you leave that one with us to have a think about? Um, so, if we can make a note of that, um, that would be good. So, if if the employer didn't respond, uh, didn't attend, would we need to amend it retrospectively? My, my sense is no, we wouldn't. No. But. Um, we might need to have a think about what implications that might have um, and whether we need to catch that information elsewhere. I don't think so, but leave that one with us. From Veronica, moving forward, will there be the opportunity for the IEPA to plan and create their own go-to links for the planning meetings? <laughs> or will this done? Now, Veronica, I'm so pleased you asked that question. Um, we're all pleased you asked that question. We were asked the same question yesterday. And um, my sense is yes, we absolutely want the IEPA to to do to plan their own go to meeting links because actually it is much faster. As long as you're comfortable with the system, it is much quicker to be done that way and you can self-serve as you need to without having to go through the EPA booking team. Um, um, however, what we landed on um, for this initial phase of beta, because there is a lot of change, and some people are more comfortable with technology than others. And there's a lot of important you know, technology around EPA Pro people have got their heads with. Initially, we would rely on the support of the EPA event booking team, but I would like to um, monitor that through beta and then make a decision as to whether that can change and whether we can roll that out to certain IEPAs to test that functionality and that the IEPAs could actually schedule their own meeting links as they need to. So it's a good question um, and very glad that you asked it. Um, Alison has highlighted, um, she said, that it, I suppose that the important thing is to make sure that the go to link is changed when editing this page. Yeah, absolutely. I, it's important. I mean, if you go back to the page, it's important you can see, um, if you remember, we have to put that go to meeting link into EPA Pro. Um, you can put a sort of placeholder and then amend it with the link. And, and the important thing to remember is to amend it if you do reschedule it. Remember, however, also the customer will get a notification from GoToMeeting and they will get the link from the GoToMeeting software. So that's probably where they're going to um, 
to sort of find the link and log on that way. But it is important to remember if you do reschedule a planning meeting, that goes to meeting will need to be rescheduled too. Okay, um, so any more questions at this point? Just gonna go back to the deck in a minute, see where we're up to. So we talked about a planning meeting, uh, we've spoken about booking the planning meeting and how to do that. Uh, I just to underline the planning meeting will take remotely, will take place remotely, so you're choosing that remote option on that page. Um, and also our planning, even if one planning meeting physically takes place for a number of apprentices and you discuss dates at that one planning meeting, each apprentice will need to have a planning meeting set up in EPA Pro currently. Um, that may change going forward. And as we've said, as Libby has said with some of these things, there will be changes as uh, over the next few months as we refine how this works and we refine what we need. And also as the supplier changes the platform and improves it. But um, currently, um, you do need a planning meeting set up. Okay, um, um, the question around the apprentice as an attendee, we've said that regardless of whether the apprentice is there or not, you need to add them as an attendee. We will confirm whether you need to click that confirmed button. We've got another um, question from Kelly, and that's another good question, Kelly. Would the employer get five links for the five apprentices? Okay, so if there are five apprentices attending um, a planning meeting, in theory, they should get one link from GoToMeeting because we'll just need one GoToMeeting link set up. However, on EPA Pro, they will get uh, if, assuming that we do have to send them a notification, they will get five notifications about those apprentices. Now, the notifications are not push, but they will see those notifications when they go on the system. So they won't receive them in an email, but they will see those notifications on the system, Libby. That's yeah, right. That's correct. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Kelly. If it so doesn't, come back to me. With the, if you switch them off as well, so if you switch them on one, and switch, if, it, if it did work, we don't know. We want to test that out. So we'll come back. Whether we can switch those off, we will find out. Because it would work for that as well. Yeah, it would do indeed. Um, so, Alison Irving, um, not, I'm assuming, so it says here, will there be, I can see that special, will there be a special telephone number or will it be the usual EPA urgent number? I think in terms of contact details, we will need to confirm that in the next couple of weeks. So there's a couple of members of the EPA book events booking team on the line. And following this training today, we will have a number of points to pick up with them. We have some initial customer contact and some channels for communication, but I think we'll need to do some more work on um, where you go when you want certain queries and you want some certain support. So can you leave that one with us? And if we can make a note of something to pick up with the EPA team. Okay, um, hopefully that's answered those questions. Any other questions? Good? Okay. Let's see if we can keep on. So we've talked to us how to book the planning meeting date. Again, there are the screenshots for that and how to um, add the attendees and then also how to reschedule. And it reminds you that a new go to meeting must be set up. Okay. So at this point, we're now moving on to scheduling assessment activities in EPA Pro. And remember, this is where, okay, you have your planning meeting, you um, carry out that planning meeting, let's assume it's with one apprentice um, and the provider, and at that planning meeting, you would set the dates for your assessment. So for customer services, you're setting the date for the showcase portfolio, the observation, and then that um, interview and um, Professional discussion, thank you, Bill. <laughs> Brain, not in gear. Um, so, if we can go back to the landing page, um, and so you're gathering that information from the planning meeting. And once you've gathered it, and remember, we said we've got a template for you to gather that. So, let me just refer back to that for a moment. So, during the planning meeting, we will provide you with this template. Um, or something like, this is a sample, something like this template to collect all the information that you need 
And then once the planning meet is completed, you'll use that information, information about the assessment components, the attendees, um, whether a go-to meeting is required, you'll use that template then to set up the information around the assessments that need to be scheduled for each apprentice. Okay, so we've gone back to the landing page. We'll go to assessment. And then what we're going to do is manage the planning meeting. <coughs> Again, what we can do is get on a managed planning meeting, you get a list then of all your apprentices and the status of where they are in their EPA. So we're going to look at apprentice 84. We're going to go along. We can see that the planning meeting has been scheduled. And now what we're going to do is create the plan. Okay, and then you will get this displayed. Again, if the components aren't correct at this stage against the standard, please don't worry, it's just dummy data. They are correct, are they? Well okay. done. Okay, so what we can see here, we'll just tick up on here, and this is the assessment plan details. It will outline then the standard for the endpoint assessment, the start date, review date, and end date. Okay, so to the right here, these three options in blue, these are your assessment components that make up the standard. So you've had your assessment planning meeting and you know that your showcase portfolio is going to be done on the 27th of January. And it is a straightforward click, drag and drop. So I'm gonna click with my cursor, I'm dragging along and I'm gonna pop it in there. And then you will get this screen that comes up. Now, as you can see, I've dropped it in on the wrong date. Not a problem, you are gonna click on there and just pick the date it is that you need. Again, this little timer clock, you would just set the time for that first component, which is the showcase portfolio, okay? The days and hours are defaulted, so these do not have to be changed but the location type needs to be selected. So you've got the option of online or physical. The terminology for EPA Pro has not been written by City and Girls, so this is the developer skill tech. So basically online or face to face. I will click online. And then I will go across to the next page. As you see at the top, there are four stages to be completed for the showcase portfolio. Stage two is an assessment details. There's nothing for you to do. It's just giving you an overview again of the standard and the component. Click next. This will be pre-populated from your assessment planning meeting and it will show that the employer and the provider details there. You go to the end one and this is where you have to select yourself. So as an IEPA, my name is Frank Farmer. I'm gonna click Frank. And then here we'll give your availability. So basically it's just going to show you what you've got planned that week. It also tells you that you don't have any other absences booked as well. It's great. Once you've selected yourself, you save an email. And then you will see that component now has gone green. And that indicates that that has now been planned. Um, can I just highlight, so for the showcase portfolio, we've already said this morning, the date you're putting in there is the date that you plan to assess that portfolio. Automatically built into the system um, under the master data is reference to the fact that um, the customer will need to upload the evidence a certain period of time before that assessment date. And they'll receive a reminder notification on the platform that they have to do that. Yes, <laughs> Kelly, I think I think I answered your question there, but um, let me know um, whether I did. So just to clarify, if you're setting the date for the assessment of the um, you're setting the date for the assessment of the portfolio. So when you're as an IEPA are actually looking at it uh, or finalizing the result for it, at least a provisional result in terms of customer services, because as we've said, <laughs> for customer services, um, you may, may actually amend that result based on the interview. But um, from the date that you set, there'll be an expectation that the customer will upload that portfolio um, two weeks, 10 working days in advance of that. 
Um, Kelly's got another one. So to clarify, the showcase observation of PD will be set for the planned EPA date. The provider will know to upload this two weeks before. Yes. The provider will get prompts on their dashboard where these come into two weeks to upload. So for example, for example, you could set, so for customer services, you could set, you could decide that you're going to assess the showcase portfolio on the same day that you do the practical observation and the professional discussion. So the dates that you're selecting for those three components could be the same. And you enter those into the system. But as I've said, for showcase portfolio, that will automatically come with a notification that the evidence, the showcase portfolio itself, has to be uploaded two weeks before that date. Um, hopefully that makes sense, Kelly. If it doesn't, can you flag that or raise your hand? Good. Okay, I'm going to take silence as, as the way forward. Right. Um, let's. Can we schedule the other components, Libby? And can we do it as it would probably happen for customer services? So they're all on the same day. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So for the so as you look on your your planner for January, you will see these are highlighted in an amber colour. And this one here is blue, that's the one we have just done. So practical observation, we're going to lift, drag, drop, 27th. Exactly the same will pop up for your date and your time. We will do this physical, your location assessment. So that will be the, the um, address. So yeah. <coughs> I'll just put some. Yeah. Okay, we'll go to next. Again, same screen, just an overview. You will be attending. And then you would select yourself again, Frank Farmer. Your calendar will come up there and you save. And then I'm going to do exactly the same again for the professional discussion. Can you put the apprentice in there as well because it was an observation. You don't, you don't need to at that no, point. Yeah. Or if there's an, an additional person that some standards allow. Um, don't need to at that point. It's a good that point, point actually. Um, I just leave that one with us. Okay. So professional discussion. I'm going to click, lift, and drag and drop. Again, this is professional discussion. We're going to do this online. Go to next. And again, and you're just going to select yourself once more, Frank Farmer, save. As you'll now see, that all components have now gone green, which indicates that these have now been planned. Can you go in and add uh, another person to that assessment date? Another person. You, you know you selected yourself, Libby. Yeah. Can we go back and look at that screen again? Yeah. Just click on. Stay with me. Yes. Yeah. That's going to pull up exactly what you've just saved. So we go to next, next, and there you go. Um, so you can select other people to attend. So that will give you a list of lead pers, IE pers, and the EPA team as well. Yeah. So if, for example, we did want the leap to attend, yes, we could add the linker in at that point. You certainly could. Yeah. Yes. And the other point that Bill just raised, if there were um, what we need to confirm though is who that notification goes to at the provider and whether if for certain standards there are other people attending, whether it goes whether you can add it. So bear leave that one with us, we need to test that out. Okay, um, right, any questions at this point? So Libby's talked through how you add the information that you've gathered from the planning meeting into EPA Pro to schedule those assessments. Just going to pause and give you a chance to ask any questions if you have any. Okay. Um, and just to remind you, um, what was I going to remind you? I've forgotten what I was going to remind you. <laughs> That's okay, we'll move on swiftly. <laughs> Um, there, it, it'll come to me, I'm sure. Give me a minute. Um, I'm just going to work through the slides a second. So we spoke about the planning. Oh, yes, I remember. So just to remind you, um, as we said, initially, we're providing you with this template. 
and, and this will walk you through what you need to ask for. This will be amended following the training, but it'll walk you through the information that you'll need in order to populate EPA Pro. Now, initially, going, initially we would assume that you use this template during the planning meeting and you complete it. Once you become familiar with the system, you can start to see that actually um, it's possible to allocate and to schedule events real time and so what you're doing is you're not taking down the information and afterwards inserting it into PA Pro you're having the conversation and you're scheduling in real time because the system is quite intuitive and it does feel like that's something that could be managed but initially and until you're comfortable we recommend that you use that planning meeting template to make sure you gather the information that you need to. Okay, so any other questions or points anybody wanted to raise? So, just going through some of the slides. Again, what Libby's done is that um, she has spoken through the screens. There's a point here on Evolve that's not relevant to customer services, so we'll take it out of the, your slide deck. You don't have to worry about that because you don't have um, an Evolve test. Worry about that. Um, and then this talks about the screenshots that you need and the how of the scheduling that Libby's just talked you through. Um, did we talk about rescheduling? We haven't. Okay, so the next point for us really, and um, as I've said to you, we would, we are encouraging customers where they set assessment dates that everybody needs to fulfill and, 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 and fulfill that commitment and to, to meet the dates that have been scheduled initially. But there may be circumstances where it's necessary to reschedule assessment dates, things might happen, people may fall ill, um, and under those circumstances you will need to have their, the customer may contact you and may need to have a conversation about rescheduling one or more of the components that are in the diary. Now for customer services, given that you are doing more than one day, you probably have to reschedule all of them if they if they can't attend that day. So let's start by showing them how to reschedule something from the landing page. Yep. So if that's the landing page. Okay, so again, you're gonna to go to the assessment tab, drop down, and you're gonna to go to manage planning meetings. Again, that gives you the list of all your apprentices. So we were working on Apprentice 84. We will go along and we're going to view the meeting. I'm just going to go back one step. Just bear with me. We've got a question while we're waiting. Yeah, let's get to the question. Yeah. All gone oh. quiet. Oh. Um. Can you hear us now? Everybody hear us? Alison Atkinson, can you give us a can you give us a, a heads up if you can hear us? That's good. Uh, yeah, oh, that's good. Thank you, Alison. We had a, a concern then that we'd lost you. Okay, so again, so back to assessment, manage planning meetings. And we're gonna go along now to this one here in progress, and it's got view plan. Picking a different apprentice because there's two of the 94, they are one in progress. It's just done. Okay, so I'm just going to thanks very much for that. Okay, so we're going to go to view plan, and again, that will then bring up um, sure. the um, calendar that you had originally booked all the assessment components for that apprentice. Again, you can clearly identify because they are highlighted in blue. So let's say for argument's sake that if you just hover over them, you will be able to see which component it's for. So for this one, uh, and as you said, they're all on the same day for customer service. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're just going to change the date. Again, just using your calendar to the 30th. We'll change the time to 4 o'clock. Okay, as long as everything is as it should be online, follow the process through. This is already defaulted to yourself now. Just save an email. And you'll see, then it's moved over to here to do the same. Open, 
change the date. Exactly the same process. And you can see that um, if reschedule needs to happen for whatever reason, um, actually it's it's a, a relatively simple task to do that directly into the flow um, that could be done you know, during the conversation. But again, um, it's whatever you feel comfortable with initially. If you prefer to take a note of any changes and then update the system, I think that is how to manage it. Would it be good practice at that stage to highlight the other people involved so they get a notification? Um, yeah, you'd have, I think it would default to the people who were involved the first time. So if you set up that event initially for the leaper to attend that, when you get to that screen, when you change the date, when you get to that screen, the leaper will already be highlighted. Right. Yes, that's correct, yeah. What about the apprentice and that you may the apprentice um, Well, what we've said is that we need to confirm um, when we set up these assessment dates, who in the provider gets the notification. Um, so that's something that we need to pick up. <coughs> okay. Any questions at this point? No? Take that as a positive thing. All right. Um, just go back to the slide deck to see where we're up to. Um, so we talked about rescheduling um, and how to do that. And again, the screenshot supports that um, and how to through um, that activity. Um, a key thing to point out, um, currently the calendar in EPA Pro doesn't link to Outlook. And so what you will have as an IEPA is your own calendar, wherever you choose to, you know, make a note of your appointments, and also a calendar in EPA Pro. Now that may change going forward, and then I think speaking to Libby, there is an intention that actually those two things will link, which will make dual running of services actually easier. Because currently, through the beta, we're talking yes, beta is small scale, but you know there are, will be IEPAs who will be doing endpoint assessments currently on the uh, learning assistance service as we currently do it and they will be also be taking on allocations through EPA Pro so just be aware of that through beta and it is, will be good practice while we're running these dual systems to make a note of any appointments that you set up in EPA Pro also in your Outlook calendar that you use regularly or and I think this is important when you are starting to use EPA Pro it's good practice to log in regularly to check your notifications and to check how things are proceeding. We'd like to encourage that where possible because that will help you get a sense of where, you know, whether there is work to do and where um, those apprentices are up to and what information the um, provider is giving you. Uh, we've got another question. Okay, Veronica, so I've um, got a yes from Alison. Um, Veronica's question, is the LEAPA notified if the IEPA changes an EPA date through the system? Okay, Veronica, if you don't mind, I'm going to leave that until the LEAPA training when we get the date for you. Um, there are a number of things that we've got to work through with the LEAPAs and about how you manage your workflow. So you have a team of IEPAs who are scheduling our events. We're trying to it as efficient as possible for you to understand what's happening so you can plan your sampling activity so if you don't mind can we put that question to one side we've made a note of it um, and then we will come back to that in the LEAPA training brilliant okay I've deleted them. Sorry, James is just asking me whether um, we could print off the questions. And I helpfully have deleted them as we've gone along, so I'm not quite sure that's possible. <laughs> we'll look into that, don't worry. Um, we've made a note of most of them. Um, okay, um, so I think at this stage, what I'd like to do is to move on to the assessing. So you've had your planning meeting, you've scheduled assessments, and now you've started your assessment activity. So you started to work through your components, you've started to make your judgments, and where necessary, start to pull together some fail feedback. 
So if we talk about assessing components, if you can talk us through that, that'd be brilliant. Okay, so again, just onto the landing page, you could do this by um, refreshing by clicking on the City Guilds and Island logo. Okay, so back into assessment. And now what we're going to do is go drop down to assessment <coughs> progress. This will list all your apprentices and the progress that they are within the EPA. At the top here, you have some filters. It's this one here that says in progress, you will need to change to filter by status. That's really important because it will list every one of your apprentices. Okay. So you can see here, just to show you an example, Apprentice 10 is green all the way through. As you drop down, you will see the assessment component for the standard. You will see the date of completion. You will see that it's completed and the overall result for that assessment component. Okay. At this point, you can also view the QA of the link pad. Okay. On the amber ones, Again, quite self-explanatory. You can see that these have been assessed by yourselves as an IE pack, and now they are waiting to be QA'd by the lead pack. Can I ask a quick, quick question on Apprentice 23, then, Libby? Yeah, okay. That note, one previous result, that indicates that that's a, uh, a reset. Bruce. That's correct, yes. Is that something someone's put in, or is that a default that happens? That happens once you do a reset. Yeah. So it's a default. It's a default, yeah. Okay. And then as you go along, then you'll see other ones that have got absolutely nothing in. They're white. And you can clearly see that the components have been booked, and we are waiting for assessment upload. So in terms of the components being booked, so we've scheduled, we've scheduled the assessment okay. components in from your panel. We've got a question then. Can we? Ooh, yes. You can't. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> Alex, it's on like not even my mouth. <laughs> so we um, we just had a question from Alex. Oh, okay. We're unable to hear you. We can now. So. <laughs> I hope you didn't miss too much, Alex. Um. Okay, so for this instance, I'm just going to use a different apprentice that I've got set up in the system. So using the search functionality, again, you can search by the apprentice name. We have done it differently. We're searching by number which is this one here, Apprentice 89. Okay. So on this instance, uh, the apprentice has had their planning meeting, all gone really well, and the assessment components have been planned. They've gone ahead. And at this point then, you are ready to QA, uh, sorry, to assess the components. Now, what I do have to highlight on this, there is a very slight glitch in the system Okay, so what we're looking at at the component, where it's got action, it's got edit assessment info. It will say view assessment info, info. And this is where you will click on the link there. And then here you have got view. You would view that and that would download the evidence for that assessment component. So if, for example, it's a showcase portfolio, if we go back to the screen, out of, um, go back to the yeah. original screen. So if we're looking at a showcase portfolio, for example, that showcase portfolio, we know there will be assessment information that the customer has uploaded because they upload that showcase. Um, and on the screen that you will see, it will say view assessment information there. You click on that um, and you will be able to then download and access that showcase portfolio just as simply as that. Um, Libby said there's a glitch. Um, there's a glitch and this is a QA site. It's not the actual site. So we've been struggling with um, some of its um, glitches the last couple of days, but it, it, it is simple to explain how you would access that information. We've got a question. Can we, yeah. Um, the sound seems to have gone. Okay. Uh, so we've got, this is not going to help really, let me just, um, if anybody's online who can hear me, can you just give me an indication as to whether the sound is still a problem? Okay, so Alison, the sound is fine for you. Um, so there's a, a lot of people are not having a problem with the sound. Thank you for that, everybody. 
um, and then some people are having a problem with the sound. So um, I'm not I have, I'm not 100% sure, Alex, whether it's your end. It feels like it is. So um, it might be worth you logging out and logging back in again to see if that makes a difference. Uh, the thing is, you won't be able to hear me say that. But <laughs> um, Alex, how's that? Just trying to shout. Can um, Jane, can you do me a favour? Can or can somebody just ping a message to our, our, our Alex O'Connor? Is yeah, that Alex? Okay, if you can just ping a message to Alex to let her know that it might be worth logging on and logging back in again. Okay, um, thank you for everybody who responded. Um, okay, so has the AEPA got the authorization to contact the provider if the showcase has not been uploaded two weeks before? Kelly, yes. I think um, we've spoken a little bit about this. I think, and it really is at the discretion of the AEPA, if that, if that um, portfolio hasn't been uploaded, and it's a day late, then sending a chasing email to your contact, I think is fine. If it is unreasonably late, and it means that that will impact, you know, your ability to carry out the assessments, then I think that's an escalation to the EPA events booking team, so they can have that conversation with the provider. Um, and that might then result in you having to reschedule the assessments. I think if it's one or two days late and you as an IEPA can manage that assessment, that's fine. But I think if it does create problems in terms of the scheduling of the rest of the assessment, then that is an escalation that we need. And we need to have that conversation because if the customer is behaving like that, then that is something that we need to, you know, to, to speak to them about. So it's a good point. Can I ask you, each of those, some of those won't need an upload, will they? No, some of them won't. So will they be designed, each element will be designed, so if there isn't an, an upload, there won't be an option to upload? There will be no option to upload against okay. that assessment component that there's That's no relevance to. Yet. Okay, so do you want to put some results in, Libby? I've got a result, these. Yay. I love this bit. I do. Yeah. Oh, another question. Kelly, I think, I think that is a good point, actually, and I think we need an offline conversation with the associate managers, the EPA team, and then with some input from our leapers. Um, so what Kelly is asking is whether if certain evidence is missing, that is something that the provider, the IEPA can go back to the provider on. Um, and I think what I'd like to do is just to look at some of the scenarios. What I don't want is I don't want the IEPAs to get dragged into lots of convoluted conversations about the quality of the evidence um, because their role is to assess that evidence. I think if it's some, something simple that's missing, reminding them of that isn't an issue. But leave that one with us because I think that's a really good point to raise. Thank you for raising that. Can we make a note of that one? Um, okay. Okay, so I'm going to add results now for the short, short case, showcase portfolio. Okay, so here again, it's all defaulted from the system, the date, and select the outcome. And then you go. Yeah, distinction. You, oh, we're going distinction already. Sorry. Okay, we're going to give a distinction. You'll get a little note that tells you that this component is successful. There would be no reason to upload any documentations because that is for your failed feedback forms. Okay, so we're going to next. There'd be no need, again, to go through any feedback. Um, we're leaving these pages blank because currently these pages are then shared with the customer. Um, and we're not planning to use these pages yet. So just leave those blank. Any fail feedback we're providing to the customer through the fail feedback form. Now that might evolve as we get to know the system going forward and we get to know how things work. But for the time being, please leave those blank. Okay, our next action, again, this would only be relevant if the apprentice has failed that assessment component, but as they've got a distinction, we're going to click next. And there's a small declaration there from yourself. It will be pre-populated um, with your name and your signature. Then all you would do is select submit. Voila. You will see then the status for that assessment component has now changed to pending QA, which means it will now show on your on the leaper for the leaper to QA. What's really important at this stage, should you have made an error, 
at any point. While it is still in that status pending QA, you can go back and edit your results. So I'm going down to pass. Because <laughs> I can't. And again, you just follow the process through as normal and submit. Okay. Uh, practical observation, we're going to add the results to this and we are going to do a distinction. We'll keep it as a distinction, just for Rachel. Again, <coughs> there's always these little um, processes that we have to go through. At the top, they are highlighted once you check, uh, click on next. Off you go. Would you like this one to pass completely? I'd like this person to fail. Oh, discussion. oh really she's asked, that. she guys. Eh? Okay, professional discussion. I'm going to add the results. And we are going to do mm -mm, fail. Again, a notice prompted to say that this has now been marked as a fail. Yep. So at this point then, we will upload your, you'll upload your failed feedback form. You choose the file. But I think I can use it. <laughs> um, okay, this is we haven't. This is not one we haven't prepared earlier. But let's see if I can put something up there. So you would go to the normal um, folders that you've got. Sorry, I'm struggling with the mouse. Um, so for example, let's go to this folder. Let's upload something that is relatively. Workshop location and that. Okay. Put that up there. And you just click open and that will upload that document in the normal way. Um, you have to put an upload name in as well, I think. Yeah, so we're going to then type in uh, failed feedback. And then you have to upload the document here. And then what it will do is just show underneath that you've uploaded the failed feedback form. You can still view and you can delete it if it's that you've uploaded the incorrect one. Are you using naming conventions for the failed feedback form for the apprentice? Or um, we will give some guidelines about how they should be named, but there are not very strict naming conventions. Ah, there are some very strict naming conventions, but we'll talk about that in the SharePoint webinar. So um, for the purposes of everybody online, we spoke this morning about saving of the assessor documents. Um, also in SharePoint because we're using that as our single source of information around the assessments for the beta phase. We'll be doing a, a recorded webinar a little bit later in the month, um, in the next couple of weeks. It is a very simple system to use. It'll only take probably about 10 minutes to explain. But within that webinar, we'll be talking about some file naming conventions that we'll need to put in place to make sure that we understand what these documents are and what they refer to. And we'll talk about those file naming conventions, so how you name a file in that webinar. Let's just call it fail feedback. Yeah, so file feedback, and I've uploaded it. Okay. Again, go to the next. Continue on to next. And then here on the number three, you've got the next action. So if you click on this drop down, it will ask you. Is it a retake, back into learning, or failed? And we select at this point, retake. Retake. And then it will give the option for earliest date for retake. And we would default that. We would put it there as, as this is not about when is the, the retake. This is just giving you the earliest date. Now, it's up to the provider to decide what the date is that they want to have a, a retake. So what you would put in there is just tomorrow's date. So at any point after tomorrow, we can reschedule the reset for that. Okay. Go. This, this is a bit that, that cuts with the having to set up any potential hits for remote go pro, etc., etc. Put it in tomorrow's date. Is that a bit we, no, we so, think that. so that date is not that doesn't go anywhere. That doesn't tell the system anything. It right. just does it go to a customer. It doesn't go to a customer. Right. Um, all it does is we you have to populate that. Um, so we put tomorrow's date. When it comes to rescheduling the retake, that's when you decide when the actual date of that assessment will take place. So don't worry about this. Okay. Just put tomorrow's date for the time being. 
Go. Oh, God, okay. Let's crush Wow. Um, so we've gone to let's that. leave that one there. Oh, we yeah. can, we've got, uh, in terms of Kelly's question, have we got a note of that one, Jane? Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, okay, so let's get rid of that. Um, yeah, so Tracy, for, um, so as we highlighted this morning for customer services, we've already said for the showcase portfolio that actually you wouldn't be able to find as an IEPA you may be looking at the showcase portfolio and you may be coming to a provisional judgment on it based on what you can see, but actually you wouldn't be coming to a final judgment until you've carried out that interview phase, which happens after the, during the professional discussion. So in terms of the platform, um, you know, you might be adding the assessor forms and filling the assessor forms in, but you wouldn't be putting a, a, um, a final grade for that component until you've confirmed it. So it could very well be that, you know, for those two components, you complete them at the same time. You've done your professional discussion, you've derived as a pass, you've done your showcase portfolio, you've derived as a distinction. And that is done, um, you input those that information into EPA Pro at the same time. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, so let's get rid of the top two. If it doesn't, Tracy, come back to us. So Veronica's question, can the IEPA give guidance on the date of the reset as the apprentice may need a period of further learning before a reset is taken? So it might not just be as soon as possible. Um, they have to give it a provisional date. No, 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 they should, they should demonstrate. Okay, Veronica, I think we need to take that question offline because um, they do have to. There is. They do have to demonstrate that there is a period of um, additional learning because it's it's not in the apprentice's best interest to do a reset if they're not ready for it. What that means in terms of what you do as an IEPA, I think we need a further discussion on that um, because ultimately, I don't think we set a limitation on currently on any system to say that you can't book a reset before that date. So, um, and it might very well be that we need to take that discussion and explore that further. So can you leave that one with us? We've taken it as a note. Um, currently, we, uh, we're not putting any limitations on it and we're relying on the provider to make the decision that based on the fail feedback and based on the fact they failed, they will need more input. But we might need further discussion on that. So leave that one with us. Um, Kelly, there may be some time when a period of learning is required, and that's the same question, I think. Um, so, Kelly, again, we'll pick that question up separately. Um, okay, so, and Tracy's fine. Good. Where do we get to? Retake. I have no idea. So, yeah. um, I think we've just scheduled a retake. So, this is, yep, so, scheduling a retake, and we're going to submit. Okay, and there you go. So now what you've done is you've made your, as an, as an IEPA, having done the assessments, having completed all the components for customer services, you've made a decision on all of those assessments. And as we've said, very often for customer services, these things happen, you know, these things can be finalised following that day's assessment. Um, and so you've put your provisional results into the system, but they will now need to be signed off by the LEPA. So... Um, at the next stage, now, quick, I've got one more question. Oh, okay. Yes, Alison, I want you to take off and meet. Bear with me one second, Alison. Alison's asked whether she can be, she can ask a question. Of course she can. Just need to find the button. Okay, Alison. Thank you. Sorry, it was too long a question to try and write down in that box. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, can I just, obviously there is lots of information, can I just confirm my understanding of what's already been said mm -hmm. before I get even more confused? Is that okay? Um, as I understand it then, we're going to be putting everything that we do um, all the documentation, the complete review forms, all onto a SharePoint. That yes. has to be done automatically in the first phase of beta. However, yes. with regards to the EPA Pro, the only information that we're going to be putting on EPA Pro 
are going to be the graded results yeah and we're not going to upload that component sheet for that we're just going to upload that onto the share thing share point we also yes. need to upload any feedback sheets on the epa pro yes and we also need to remove the version one of if we've got a version one and change it to a version two if the person has now passed that component part no so in terms of removing so you're quite right you're what you've said for um in terms of the the assessor documents everything is saved on sharepoint the things that you put for each component the things that you put on epa pro is the results and if relevant any fail feedback if they haven't failed you're not putting any documents on tpa pro for that particular component if during qa um the leaper asks you to change something um you may need to and it's the fail feedback form for example you will need to take the old fail feedback form off the system and replace it with a new one only under those circumstances though Alison. I completely understand now. Thank you. It's just that we usually have a version one that failed before showcase, and then we have a version two. So that stays on SharePoint, doesn't get uploaded onto EPA Pro. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for clarifying. Um, okay. So um, now, bearing in mind that we've gone a little bit further than I wanted to, we've done about an hour and a half. I'm going to suggest that we take uh, probably about a 10 minute break. We haven't got much more to go through, but I think we've got a bit too much to do all in one go. So um, I'm going to suggest we break for 10 minutes and we come back at about five past three. So hopefully that's all right. Um, so I will see you. Stretch your legs, have another cup of tea. We'll be drowning in tea and I will see you back here at five past three.
Yeah. Um, hello, welcome back. Um, let me just share my screen with you. Okay, we've gone through some of the questions. So where we got up to is we have, have put results in for each of the assessment components. So as you as an IEPA have determined your judgment, you've added your results to each of the components and now they are pending QA. So at this point, what I'd like to do is go in as a leaper and show you all your IEPAs, how you sign off those results um, for each of the components. Is that all right? That is fine. Okay, so as you can see, I'm on the, and I have been all afternoon, the IEPA dashboard. So I just need to come out of that um, and I'm just going to go into a QA dashboard, very similar to a leaper. So if you just bear with me two seconds. I need some fancy music. Do, 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 do. Don't worry about this. Um, don't yeah. want to worry about clicking through the screens. This is only because Libby's managing um, a super user access. Um, so when you need to pay attention, we'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, pay attention. <laughs> so this is the Leapa dashboard. And what it will show you is, let me show you this. So again, you're in the assessment hub for Leapa. You've got the booking planning meeting, you've still got managed planning meetings, assessment progress as per the IEPA. But what you have now is this fancy QA and certification. So I've clicked on the QA and this ultimately gives you your workload that's to be completed. So he will be listing your, well, the IEPA's names and the number of items that are waiting to be QA'd from that IEPA. Okay, so I'm going to click here that you want to QA it, and it's on this little red pen here. And up comes then the workload from that IEPA. Now this is the one we've just worked on, Apprentice 89, as you can see. I'm going to open it up. Okay, so we can see now that the pending QA, which is great, we've got a result of a pass, distinction, and a fail. Okay, so what you can do is that do you want me to answer that question that's Let's just popped check up the question first. Um, is each case automatically um, signed to the correct leaper? Now, Kelly, um, we'll talk more about this in the in the leaper training, but currently on the EPA Pro system, there isn't a mechanism for us assigning certain IEPAs to you. Um, so all of the leapers will see all of the IEPAs in that particular team. So you will need to know from that list which IEPAs are relevant to you. Now that's currently how it stands for the small scale within beta. And because it's a small scale, um, I think that's manageable. But as I've said, part of beta is to for us to understand how this may need to evolve. So for beta, um, you won't be able to see just your eye, because you'll be able to see them all. But you will know which ones are relevant to you and therefore which ones you have to work on. Hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Okay, so for an IE pad, I'm gonna look if I've got view result. So that is a view result of the IE pad. You can view the assessment information, so any evidence that's been uploaded against the components, and there's a QA result. So let's have a look first at the view result of the showcase portfolio. You are seeing exactly what the IEPA has inputted onto their screen when they were resulting this assessment component. So you can see that it was a pass. You go along, same stages as before. Can I just check um, on this one? Remember that in order to quality assure this component, you can see the result, which is the pass, but there's nothing else in terms of assessment evidence to look at on the platform. Um, if there are, if it's a showcase portfolio, you can access the showcase portfolio through the platform, so you will be able to access that. But if there are any assessor documents that are um, needed to be looked at, you will need to access that through SharePoint. But let's assume for the purposes of the demonstration that you have looked at all of the assessor documentation, you've looked at the showcase portfolio, um, and you've seen the results on EPA Pro. So can we, can we sign it off? 
Yeah, so you're happy that this um, component for this apprentice is going to be a pass. So you would. So we can just tell you that, that view assessment information allows you to view the any evidence that's been uploaded okay. against that. So for that particular showcase portfolio, let's take that one. You want to view the showcase portfolio. You can see the showcase portfolio there. You can download it. You can look at it. Yes. Um, if there are any assessor documents, you'll need to access SharePoint at that point. But let's assume we've done that. You're happy, you're going to QA the result as a leaper. And again, it's a very straightforward um, screen. Sorry, just lost my mojo then. So, any feedback? Are you not happy? We're that? not currently going to put anything in that feedback column. And if that changes, we'll let you know. Um, because currently, that feedback will go to the IEPA, but it doesn't go to them until after results to be published. So leave that blank. Go to next. And this is where then you are declaring that you agree with the assessment decision given by the independent endpoint assessor for this assessment component. So again, what will happen is when you set up your, uh, once you get a chance to log in, after you reset your password, there is an option then for you to um, set up your signature within Pro, so it will default all the time on here. Uh, so I'll just put test and then I'll just do a little squiggle. Let's do it. And then what you need to make sure is that you come down to this section here that states publish results. And that is when you are 100% happy with the result for that assessment component. Once you release the results, we cannot retract these results back through Pro. So this is like the last stop saloon before this reaches the provider and the apprentice. Okay, so we'll press say, no, we're not, we're going to click it, sorry. <laughs> and it will go green and it will say submit QA and publish result. Okay, that's done. Okay. So for the next one, we're going to QA result again. Yes. Hasn't changed the status. It hasn't changed the status on it yet. No. Let's try it again, shall we? Next. That's even worse than the first time. Okay, publish results. Submit QA and publish results. Okay. Now, what would normally happen at this point if it, if it automatically give you a notification that the results have gone out? Yes, so what would happen is that green icon would come up saying uh, results processed, and this would then go to completed, and this would be green. Now, I'm sorry that it hasn't done that. As I said, it's, it's a QA site, so we've had a few of these glitches, but what you would then see for that particular apprentice, as you said, is that if you went, um, if you went back out into that apprentice, part of this progress bar would turn green. Yes. So that's what should happen. Um, it currently hasn't. I just want to pick up that question then. Um, can they be filtered moving forward as when life or like, because there will obviously be a lot of bookings. Um, so this is talking about the Leaper workflow, Kelly. Um, and I think, as I said to you, we've got a bit of work to do this week and next in terms of the Leaper functionality. So if We'll, we've got a record of your question, and I do appreciate that when there's a lot of data in the system, it will make it more challenging for the leaper. Through beta, there will be relatively little data in there because it's quite small scale, but we will need to look at how we we support the leaper with this and, and, and what we can do to um, for that to evolve. So leave that one with us. Um, that answers that question for you. Um, Okay, can we try and get a, can we try and QA one of the others that works? Sorry. No, it's fine, no problem. I have got some I made earlier, just in case. <laughs> so I'm just going to go through QA again. So I'm going to pick Frank because he's the IE that we've been using pretty much all day. So let's use Apprentice 31. Okay, so uh, these are all passes, so this is quite good. So we would view the result as normal. Yes, it's a pass. Happy with that. Here, view assessment information if required, and then QA the result. Yeah, it's a pass, so no feedback given. Absolutely fine. 
um, I confirm. So let's see if this one works. Signature. And I'm now going to publish the results and submit QA and publish results. <laughs> it doesn't like you this afternoon. It doesn't like it today. <laughs> the feedback oh, feels quite required. Sorry, right, my sincere apologies. Really sincere apologies. I have missed a step out. So let's go back again. So you'll go to assessment. You're going to go as a leaper to your QA tab. You will pick your IE path. Okay, we'll work with Apprentice 31 and then we can do 89 afterwards. Okay, so we're happy it's a pass. The leaper has to put QA. Yeah, QA or checked and approved. And I think, um, sorry, so I think we'd agree there, in order to move it along, we need to put something in yep. there. So I think what we have agreed, and we'll make this clear, is that what you need to put in that field is just quality assured, just so that it shows that you've done something. Um, add QA, and that will help the, 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 the system to move along. Not We're not going to upload anything. Nothing that. So yeah, apologies. So in the comments, a comment does have to be added. You would go to next. Again, this would be defaulted for you anyway. Oh, they're getting worse. You are publishing the result. Submit QA, publish results. Yay! And there's both the bar turns from Amber to Green. So, can we do the rest of them? So, I'm going to do the rest as a pass and then we can revisit the one where we have a fan. Is that okay? So, uh, practical observation, a QA result. Got QA. Next. Again, this would be ultimately in there for you. A bit in QA. It's not a question. Voila. It's disappeared. So it's disappeared because you completed it. Yeah. Can the leaper see and access the evidence submitted by the prior provider for the apprentice? Yes, Veronica. I think we showed you that. So if we go back into one of the records that we, for example, we know there is information. So if you go in as a as a leaper, you see the one um, there that Libby has. It's showcase portfolio pending QA view assessment information. If you click on that. Um, that will allow you to download that um, showcase portfolio and to see that so you can make your decision because you will be able to QA it if you haven't seen the original evidence. That is only for the documents that have been uploaded by the customer. For any assessor documents that have been created through the process, they will be saved on SharePoint and we'll provide you training with that a little bit later in the month. Um, hopefully that answers your question, Veronica. Okay, so shall we, as we've already now have an apprentice who has gone through their three components and they've passed them all, mm -hmm. can we now show them how the IEPA can now derive an overall result? Okay, so that is on certificate. So on the IEPA dashboard, along with the LEPA, there is a certification tab under the assessment. So can we go back to the landing page? Oh, sorry. Yes. <clears throat> I need to go as okay. I'm to just going to log in back in as Frank Farmer. Lovely Frank. Okay, so back to Frank to the IEPA dashboard under assessment. There is one that says certification. So remember, your three components, you put a result in for them, and hopefully they've now been QA'd by the, by the LEPA. Now, in order to derive an overall result, you need to also put that into the system. Okay, so we've gone back into assessment to certification. We've selected our apprentice. Again, it will be the apprentice name. We can see that you can actually view the QA, but that would only just be the comments that the LEAP has put in to push the results through. At that point, you would then click certify apprentice. and set the overall result for the end point assessment. 
So based on what you know about deriving the overall grade, in most cases, for each of the, the standards, there is some kind of grade determination form. So you would work out, you can see the results that um, you have for that particular assessment, and you would use that information along with anything else in that grade determination form to select an overall result. And we're going to say that they've passed. Oh. Now, the file at that point, we've said, is that that grade determination for, um, file, you can add to, e we'd like you to add to EPA Pro, and we'd also like you to add that to SharePoint. So we'd like that in two places. It doesn't get released to the customer, but we'd like to, to, to use the EPA Pro system to log it as well. So where there is an overall outcome and you have a grade determination form that is saved into SharePoint along with everything else, but it's also added at this point. Can we try and do that? Just say that. Yeah, so you click on so choose. Click on again. And it will allow you to, to, um, to select the document from yeah. your local drives to upload which I think we've already done. Can we go to that question? Yes, please. <clears throat> right, so can the LIPA see and access the evidence submitted by the provider? Yes, they can, Veronica. Yeah. Is, it, is my understanding correct that we would wait for the LIPA to confirm QA before we certificate? Yeah, so the, um, the LIPA has to, has to sign it off before it can move to that certification stage. So you couldn't give an overall grade for that particular um, um, IEPA, uh, that particular apprentice, and you couldn't confirm that until um, the individual results had been confirmed. Um, if a leap takes three days, do we need to check each day to see if it's been QA'd? Um, there are notifications on the system, but in order to engage with those notifications, you will need to check. EPA Pro. Currently, those notifications are accessed when you go on to the EPA Pro system. Um, so we are encouraging the IEPAs to engage with the system um, as frequently as they can, so they get a picture of how that um, apprentice case is moving through the process. Any other questions at that point? So the final grade is established by the IEPA and then published. It's got, it goes to the LEPA. For QA next, and that's what we'll show you. And then it's published. So at this point, we have um, where are we? At? So we've got an overall outcome of a pass. We're going to go over to the next page. Again, there's these tabs that we have to go through to complete. And this is for the overall grade. This is for the overall grade. It's confirming the employer's details. You have to tick to confirm the employer's details. Again, now this is the apprentice details. You have to click that it's the, that apprentice that you are overall grading. There's your default set there. If you're 100% happy, you will submit. And then it will come up on your screen that it's been certified by Frank Farmer and the date. Um, and that is for the IE plan. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to QA that as the leaper, yeah. how do you do that? As the leaper. So, we <laughs> <about, laughs> so, so you, you as an IEPA have derived the results and now it is to be signed off by the leaper. Okay, if you just bear with me, we just need to come out of the IEPA dashboard. Just pop down here. Am I going to put it? There it is. 31 was it? Yeah. Okay, so again, you would go as a, a leaper, you would go to the assessment, you would go to do certification, you would find the apprentice, click on the apprentice, and then you could. Download the re record of completion um, or edit certification details. Um, and view certification um, details. Yeah. If you view certification details, what that will show you is that there is a result. Yes. What all the results are. And if there is a grade determination form there, you can access that grade determination form yes. to review. Yes. Now, remember, we're going to be going through these processes with the LEPA specifically in that training, but I just wanted to show you that um, today just to give you um, a little heads up. We've got a question, Libby. Okay. 
My concern would be if we do an assessment the day before I go, we would have to go to check you while on holiday to make sure we are certificated. Um, Tracy, I think we need a separate conversation about that because I think um, you know this will depend on how we manage workloads. If you know you go on holiday and the assessments have to be completed, we may need a conversation about reallocating those or allowing somebody else to support with them. But can we make a note of that and come back to you on it? That's talking about um, because obviously if you are an IEPA and you are following a case through, if you do go on holiday, um, we need to manage the impact on the customer and the apprentices. But that doesn't change um, from the current system actually. So even with the current system, if you are allocated an EPA and you are going away unexpectedly, we'd need to have a conversation about how we manage that assessment. So let's come back to you on that one. Um, okay, let's just go back. Any other questions at this point? I just want to go back to um, assessing a component. So working through the slides, we've done quite a number of these. So again, um, we talked about entering a pass. So as you're an IEPA, you would enter the results, and these are the screenshots that show you how to do that. Now, in terms of the different options that you can put there, those options are determined by the assessment. So if one of the components, for example, in customer service is only pass and distinction, you will only be able to select the outcomes that are relevant to that particular assessment. Um, Okay, now what I'd like to look at next, and I think this is the last part really, is what we do if something's failed and how we reschedule and reset. Is that possible? That is fine. Okay. <coughs> so I'm just going to come out of screen yeah. and I'm just going to log back in then as a. I. I. Just a prank. Okay, so again to the assessment tab, let's have a look at the assessment progress. Again, if you remember earlier, we made sure that was to filter by status. And it was Apprentice 89. Yeah, so for this instance, that the um, results have gone from the IE path. We now need to QA them as a lead pack, so I actually need to come out of this. So, 2089, so assessment QA for the lead parole. Don't be frank. And we're going to go to 2089. So we can see here that as a lead pack, the IE pack has given the showcase portfolio pass, the practical observation as a distinction, but they have failed the professional discussion. So I will just quickly QA these results. I'm going to publish and submit QA and publish. Okay. The QA resulting of the practical observation, okay, QA, X. Publish results. And as a leaper, I'm actually quite happy that this was a fail. Okay, so now we have um, an apprentice who had three component assessments for customer services. They've been assessed by the IEPA and they've been signed off as being the results that the IEPA has given them. And one of them has failed. So what we've said in terms of the fail component, um, the customer would either contact, they would get the result on EPA Pro and they would either contact the IEPA to reschedule and reset or if it is a fail, we'd encourage and we have a template email for the IEPA to contact the customer um, and to encourage them to um, book or to schedule and reset that particular component. So as a, an IEPA, how that works on the system, we can talk through now. 
So I think the fair component was the professional discussion. Yeah. So can we look at how they then schedule? So if you can imagine, you would have a conversation with the customer, so you have contact with the customer, um, and the customer and yourself would agree a date for the reset to take place. What you then need to do is to confirm that reset date in EPA Pro. Okay. Before we move on to that, there's a question there. Oh, can we okay. just yeah, pick up that question? Uh, okay, so can I ask please, Alison, um, can I confirm I complete the EQA paperwork? I need to then update EPA Pro with individual results per component, then have to wait three further days. for the leap particular before I upload the overall grail. Okay, so as we've said for customer services, um, a lot of the assessments happen together, actually, um, and what you might find is that you are entering a component result for each of the components, plus any fail feedback, and doing the overall grade calculation at the same time. Um, and I think we need to test out whether that's possible or whether we need to wait until the individual components are QA. So, Alison, can you leave that with us? And, and we will get back to you on that. Because as far as I understand, you can do everything together, but I think we need to check that. So it's a good question, but leave that one with us and we will, we will check that. Because ideally, as you said, you'd want to do everything together. Um, and hopefully the system will allow us to do that, but I think we need to test it. Uh, so a note for the LEAPA meeting would be much easier for the LEAPA to certificate the final grade rather than being passed back to the IEPA again. Okay. I, I think it's the same yeah, question, sure Kelly. So I think, and I think that's the thing, is that we need to just check that the system will allow that. And if it does, I agree, that's the better way of doing it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Some really good questions coming through. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm just going to log back in as Frank. Mr. Armour. Okay, so I'm going to go to assessment and I'm going to go to assessment progress. And I'm going to find my apprentice. Again, always remember that in progress must be by filter by status. Is it 89? I've lost it now. <coughs> it was right, it was right. It is, I've just highlighted that's that's green all along. So it's just something I just need to log. Okay. Because what should happen is where on a, where it's got the apprentice 89, yes it is highlighted in red and yes there is an exclamation mark to say that it's not completed as an EPA. That bar across should not be all green, it should be three quarters green, but that's for me to pick up. Okay. So you open up, again, don't need to worry about these two, but here you've got professional discussion and we knew it was a fail. So you've got the option now to book retake. And it's the, it's the um, entering of the fail and the processing of that fail will make that um, yes. icon appear. Yes, it makes that appear on there. So you would book a retake. And again, you are going to revert back to the original process when you were setting up your compo assessment components for the uh, planning meeting. And it's got a reminder at the top there that the component has a notice period of seven days. So it would put, that is reminding you that it needs to be set a certain date yeah. in the future because there may be requirements um, on the um, customer to provide certain information. Yes. Right. So <coughs> I'm just going to pick a date and a time. 10 o'clock early morning and again we just go through the process as we did originally when setting this up nothing has changed Frank's already on there good old Frank and that reason is um, it's a retake and it gives you the options at the top there for reschedule retake and back into learning we are going to enter retake And then there's the declaration, professional declaration. And we just click this. Now, this is part of the system. We yes. can't change these yes. currently. So we just have to confirm. And it is literally just tick them along. And then again, your um, signature will be defaulted on there. And then you get retake, click it. And that is now all planned in for you. 
Um, and the booking of that retake will then give you um, a place on the EPA Pro system to put an eventual result. Um, but as we've said, so if a component fails, it's a conversation between the provider and the um, IEPA of when to reschedule that reset. And you've just seen on EPA Pro how you do that. And it's really important um, that you follow that process because when it comes then to putting the result in, you have a place to, to log that result again. So there's a reset in the system. Any questions at that point? Okay, so Kelly, it, um, your question is an, another planning meeting book to discuss retake dates. Um, I think, as I said at the beginning, the planning meeting happens at the beginning. If any rescheduling needs to happen because of issues with commitments and timing, or even because of a retake, you can just do that follow-up discussion via email or via telephone, whatever you prefer. Um, so um, we'd encourage, you know, it doesn't have to be another go-to meeting a conversation. Um, so hopefully that's answered that question. Let's give it to that one. Can you remind me, you mentioned that when scheduling the assessment date for the showcase, it will auto automatically give a mail 10 days. So um, if there is a showcase portfolio, so if any of the component assessments in the system have some kind of notice period for the customer to provide evidence, for example, what will happen is when you set the assessment date for that, a notification will come up on the system to the provider to remind them that evidence has to be uploaded. Um, and that's, that time scale will be built when the product is built onto the system. So whatever exists now will exist within EPA Pro. Um, can we get rid of that one? Oh, something different, sorry. Oh, oh, oh no. Um, oh. Sorry, Tracy. Um, we might have just lost your comment. Um, can you... I might take it off. I'll tell you what, instead of you having to type it again, let's take you off. Um, you. Uh, where are we? Tracy, hi. Sorry about that. Hey. <laughs> sorry for the confusion. So basically what you're saying there is that you should book at least 10 days ahead for a showcase any any um scheduling because obviously it's going to give a notification 10 days before to them to yeah. upload it yeah so i think um if you know that you want to carry out an assessment for a showcase portfolio but you're planning to do that i put a date in there for friday you know that's not going to be appropriate because if the if the center needs a provider needs two weeks notice or two weeks to upload they need to give you two weeks um, to assess that, then you need to allow that that you know two weeks for them to do it. Because remember that date that you're putting in there for the showcase portfolio is the date that you're going to review it. It might be that you you know that so the customer would upload it tomorrow, and then you've got two weeks to work through the assessment and to come to a provisional judgment. So um, the date you put into the into the um, system will be the date that you're going to make the provisional judgments and you need to give yourself sort of two weeks before then for the provider to, to give you that evidence. Does that make sense? It does. I've had a couple of occasions where I've been asked to do an assessment very quickly. Um, for example, one learner was leaving the business. Um, so obviously that would have, I mean, in that case, it was four days before and I was asked if I would agree to do it, which I did. And obviously I assessed straight away as soon as it was uploaded that day for me. Um, in that case, they wouldn't get it. They wouldn't get the letter in, from the email in time before they'd even uploaded it. That was all. No, and I was going to say so they won't get the notification. But if it is a, an exception like that, where either they've contacted the EPA booking team, or they've had a conversation with you, you, you remember you're having that scheduling conversation with the provider. If they ask you that they need to complete this very quickly, um, mm. and they, you know, you're happy with that then there's nothing to stop you putting in that date. Um, I don't think the system will stop you putting in an earlier date. It just means that that notification won't mean very much to that provider. And that's something that you have to highlight to them in that, in that discussion. Does that make sense? It does. Um, sorry, can I also go just back to a previous point when you said, I know you said to park it, but just with regard to that three days, um, and for example, if you're on holiday, actually it doesn't affect me because I go on regardless. Um, so it doesn't affect me. I was just thinking of, of the system as a whole. Um, there have been occasions where it, um, if you've got an endpoint assessment, 
and then the um you've completed it but then the leaper can't go in maybe they're on holiday or maybe it's three or four days before they actually go on to um quality assure it then if you were on holiday then potentially that would mean you were logging in every day you're on holiday so does that not open up and and even if you were not a day before you went left for holiday being on assessment but say two or three days before going on assessment you still might have to wait for that to be quality should so you could actually finish it off um, and I think we some of those scenarios we're going to have to talk through because I think we get we get mm. similar issues with the current system how yeah. that works in terms of EPA Pro um, I, I'm not sure at this point but you know there are ways of reallocating you know different leapers can access the same materials in the same way that we have on learning assistant currently so okay. I think that when that happens we need to have a discussion about how we manage that so okay. leave that one with us it's a good point um, but I think we need to to talk about you know when the case is with the IEPA you know presumably if holidays are coming up we know that and we can plan for it. Mm. It's those unexpected events that we don't know about that causes more problems. I think we just need to talk through some scenarios with the EPA booking team and the assistance team to see you know, if that happens, how do we reallocate at that stage to make yeah. sure that as it proceeds and that the customer is not waiting unnecessarily for a result. So leave that one with us if that's okay. okay. No problem, thank you. Brilliant. Um, okay, I'm gonna shut. Tracy, back to meet and Veronica, you've got your hand up. Hello, Veronica. Speak. Uh, that was from before. I haven't got one up now. I think you just stuck. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll put you back. That's fine. Don't worry. Um, I'll try Alison. Alison, you've got your hand up. Is that is that because you want to speak, or was that from before? Um. Well, I did send a question, so... I've got your question, I'll read it now. So what you're asking is, will the IEPA always conduct the reset for the same apprentice? Now, I think we would aim for that, actually, and in an ideal world, that is what should happen. Because, um, so in the new world with EPA Pro, what we'd encourage is that one IEPA would take that apprentice through from start to end, and that would include the resets as well. Because as an IEPA, you've been on that journey with the apprentice and you've got a sense of what they can do um, and what some of the issues were in the original assessment. And also under certain circumstances, and I, I don't know if this applies for customer services, in terms of a reset, sometimes they, they only submit additional information rather than the whole portfolio again, for example. So I think we would always aim to have the same IEPA doing the reset as the original assessment. Now, there may be some exceptions where that's not possible. But again, I think we need to talk through those scenarios, either as we work through beta or in the next couple of weeks to see how we manage that. Hopefully that answers your question. If it doesn't, um, does that answer your question, Alison? Yes, thank you. No worries. Um, Okay, I'm just going to get rid of some of these. Oh, we've got lots of questions. Um, so I think we've answered that one. So Alex, um, this question, will the system stop you booking a day for the event if less than 10 days prior? I don't think it will, Alex. I think it will flash up a notification, but I think there's enough flexibility to allow you to book it when you want. Um, but I, I think as an IEPA, they will just need to be mindful that they, you know, if they're booking the assessment of the portfolio to take place in two weeks' time, you know, they need to allow themselves some time to download the portfolio, to review it, to go through it before they come to that judgment. So I think that's the case. Hopefully that's answered your question. Alison Atkinson, can the LEAPA override and take the responsibility of completing the whole grade determination and certification? Um, I think we need to check, I need to check that, Alison. Um, I, I can understand certain circumstances where we might need to do that, but um, we need to check whether um, this, that would involve reallocating the assessment to the LEAPA. And if we are reallocating the assessment to the LEPA, whether that would then subsequently need to be QA'd by a different LEPA. So can we make a note of that and, and come back to you on that one? It's a good question. Um, and I absolutely got both of those. Um, and then thank you from Alison and thank you from Alex. Brilliant. Um, okay, so I think that's answered everybody's questions so far. Now, I don't think there's anything else left to go through 
in terms of the system. Let me just check the deck. So we've talked about failed feedback, we've talked about um, the quality assurance of the component, and we've talked about the LEAPUS role. And to ease the concerns of any of the LEAPUS online, now we've got four LEAPUS online, as I said, we will be looking in more detail at the role of the LEAPER when we do your training in a couple of weeks' time. Okay, so that concludes the walkthrough of the system and um, we focused on the IEPA role and there are some things that we will need to come back to you on but as I said as well as this training and updated deck there will be some bite-sized video guides of the different steps that you need to take and how to work through that and um, before we lose Libby are there any other questions on the system That's great. Okay, thank you so much, Libby. That's been really All helpful. Right, thank, thank you, guys. So. Right. Um, at this point, really, what's left to say is the next step. Oh, we have one question. <laughs> thank you. That was really clear from Alison. I thought you were asking a question as Libby went out the door out there, Alison. <laughs> I was about to call her back. <laughs> I almost panicked. Um, okay, at this point, the next step is really just to, to go through the next steps for you. Um, now, what we are starting to put together for you, and we've, we've kind of got this earmarked, and this will be completed in the next couple of weeks, is your contact points. As you accept allocations on EPA Pro and as you work through the system, um, we want to make very clear who you go to for support and where you get get your support from for the different elements because there will be different teams and also where you will field queries from customers. One of the risks that was raised this morning and I think is is clear to to all of us is that you know the customers may start to contact the IEPA about other questions that they have, you know, about looking for more information on, on as to why they failed or looking for additional information about um, the showcase portfolio. And we need to retain the role of the IEPA as it currently stands. So you will need a very clear message to send to customers about where to field those queries and a channel to direct those queries. So through the next couple of weeks, we will clarify that and we will update this table and make that very clear to you and provide you with that information. Next steps. Okay, so as I've said, we've had lots and lots of really great feedback and thank you so much for such brilliant engagement today. Um, there's been some, some questions that have kept me on my toes and Libby and there's some really good insight. Um, around the detail of how it will work for your standard and we, we need to take that away. We'll go through the questions and the idea will be that we'll update the deck um, and provide any additional answers that we need to before we go live with beta. So um, we're also doing additional training on um, for leapers in the next couple of weeks and we will also be doing some training on SharePoint and how you access SharePoint as a LEAPA, and how you save documents in SharePoint as an IEPA. It's a very simple system, and the training won't be very extensive. I can't think it'll be much more than a recorded webinar of about a quarter of an hour, but we will provide you with that training before you go live for beta. Um, as I've said, there'll be a number of video <coughs> guides, We've got some template emails and some template forms to share with you. We need to update those um, and some um, material to support you with the planning meeting, which again, we'll provide to you before we go live. Um, as I said, the LEAPA training is the end of January and currently the go live for beta is the 27th. And after that point in theory, um, allocation of cases could start to certain uh, of certain apprentices, but we're not expecting necessarily a big bang. We're expecting cases to start to trickle in through February, um, and after that point, you may or may not start to be allocated certain um, apprentices. After that point, if you do accept an allocation, then the assessments can start to take place um, using EPA Pro. Of course, all of this is in the backdrop of, of, of what we're currently doing. So we, as you know, we're currently delivering hundreds and hundreds of assessments through business as usual, and that will continue in parallel to the speeder. The speeder is very contained and quite small scale, 
um, but the current processes will continue for all our other customers and our other apprentices. As I said at the beginning, um, through beta, once we've completed the training and through the beta phase, uh, we would love to get your feedback. So we'll be asking you for some feedback on the training um, and we'll be asking for some feedback through the beta phase um, so we have some, we're working with some great people who will be contacting you either through survey or for interview to get some feedback as to how the process is working, you know, how the system is working. Um, so we can start to evolve those processes and respond um, and, and support the improvement of this as we move forward. Okay, so that's where we are in terms of next steps. And that kind of concludes um, what I wanted to talk to you about today. So before we finish, are there any more questions or comments on what you've seen this morning and also the system stuff this afternoon? Just going to give you another 10 seconds. <laughs> OK. Um, great. All right. Just to say thank you so much. I think it was a really, really useful session. And you've asked some brilliant questions. And I know it's a long time to be online. So thank you very much for your engagement and um, we will be in contact with you over the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much.